ready, somebody? Oh, I can't hear you. Are you ready, somebody? All right, all right. Is you ready? I need us to build some excitement in this place, all right? So there's a napkin right in front of you. Please pick up that napkin quickly. There's a napkin in front of you. Pick it up, pick it up, everybody. Mommies, daddies, uncles, aunties, grandma, grandpa, everybody. Please pick up the napkin in front of you. Yeah, yeah, blessings. Pick up the napkin in front of you, somebody. Pick up the napkin quickly. Everybody, let's all get involved. Pick up the napkin. Pick up the napkin quickly. All right, now if you have a napkin in your hand, I want you to wave it in the air. Wave the napkin, wave the napkin. Wave it in the air. Wave it, 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 wave it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're ready, give it up for the freshest, the newest, mind-boggling, rip-rolling, audacious, for tablos. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, Mr. and Mrs. Yabuna. stories today I have here with me Bennett Otu um, a very old friend I've known him for years and today I will get to know what he's doing in the industry and how well he's doing it he's very successful I will allow him to speak um, that way we can have a better feel of who Bennett is so Bennett you're welcome. thank you thank you very much thank you just tell me a little bit about yourself um, your name, your education, your background, just in a little summary. Okay. Um, so yeah, Bennett Otu is my name. Um, born and bred in Ghana. What else? What else do I see about me? Uh, okay, I schooled in the Accra Academy. I schooled at KNUSD. Um, I studied Bachelor of Science in Agriculture. Done a few courses in Project Management. Done a few courses in Marketing as well. Um, I, I like to call myself an entrepreneur um, because I I like to find solutions to problems. Okay. Uh, I, I am a, I'm an event MC uh, or moderator, if you can call it that way, in Ghana. So I do from birthday parties to weddings to corporate events to get together, to so award ceremonies to everything events. I MC those events and I moderate those events. Um, aside that, I also manage uh, an online travel platform where we we do we book flights, hotels, do um, group tours, fun tours, educational tours, um, and all of that. Um, aside that as well, I I also studied agriculture, so I, I love agriculture. I love farming and, and doing things related to agriculture. So I also own a few. Um, agricultural related products and, and services. So I do poultry as well. I do a bit of pineapple as well. Okay. Um, what else? I do, I also do um, food delivery, um, grocery delivery. So during the lockdown period, um, a lot of people were finding it very difficult to step out of their homes because they were mandated to be indoors, like curfews and all of that. So people couldn't go to the markets to shop and to buy the, the produce that they needed to cook. 
at okay. home. So I, yeah, so I came up with a, a business module that delivered groceries and food stuff fresh to people's homes um, in a safe manner at a very affordable price, like more or less like the same rates you get from buying from the market. Okay, right. We deliver to you yeah, at a fee, but you just pay the market price for it. So okay. yeah, I mean, I I try to manage all of these businesses together. Yeah, so basically that's that's a bit about myself. Before we get to the MCing and the others, where do you work currently? Okay, so at the moment, I am the public relations manager for Jumeaga. Okay. Okay. I started up as a public relations and marketing manager, and then God blessed me and I got promoted okay. to be a country manager of the travel business. So Jumia has a travel business. Okay. Or had a travel business where you do online flights, hotels, and everything. So I got promoted to become country manager of the travel business. Um, the company restructured and re-strategized. So um, they let go of a few of the ventures. So the travel business was one of them. They sold to another company. So I had to go back and do public relations and, and marketing as well. So a bit of marketing engagement. But my main role at Jumia at the moment is public relations, head of PR for Jumia Ghana. Wow. Let's talk about your traveling agency. Okay. I know you just started that or recently. Yeah. Yeah, so that started in December. Okay. And December 2019. So based on my experience with Jumia learning about online travel and everything, I mean, so as as I earlier mentioned, like I believe I am an entrepreneur because I find solutions to problems. Problems, right. So I think that one of the problems facing Africa and Ghana was e-commerce, was doing business online, right? Um a couple of companies have tried to change that, but I think that we are still lagging a lot behind when it comes to doing anything online. Okay. Um, the benefits are enormous, the convenience, the, the cost effectiveness and everything. They are big, big benefits. But Africa or Ghana, let me say specifically, doesn't really appreciate that. So being in charge at Jumia Travel gave me the foresight that Africa had a problem when it came to travel. People and do tourism and all of that but they didn't know where to go and okay. they didn't know it was being that affordable people wanted to book flights and they didn't understand that some of the flights were either one way or non-refundable tickets and all of those things people don't have ideas when it comes to these things so in trying to solve the need like the problem i decided that okay the company that i used to work for that was solving the problem that that existed Mm-hmm. was no more in Ghana operating in Ghana right so there was basically nothing in the same vein so if people wanted to travel and book a hotel and all of that online there, there was nothing like that for them to do like okay. if people wanted to to book a flight to the US for instance from Ghana like they would have to physically walk to the British Airways office or South African Airways right. and make inquiries and compare prices and book but why don't I come up with a platform that allows people to go online, compare prices, do everything, like be convinced, like stay in your house. You don't need to go out. Stay in your home or your office, search for the flights or destination, everything, book it, get somebody to call you, confirm it, pay for it, and then you're done. So to your, let's take away the struggle of having to call 10 different hotels and ask them for prices and compare. Let's do that job for you, right? I mean, you're not focusing mainly on travel outside of Ghana, but mostly travel inside of Ghana. Am I correct? Um, so it's a little bit of both. Both, okay. So, yeah, I mean, international travel is big, but I think um, something that Ghanaians need to do is to promote domestic travel as well. Okay. So, I mean, if you ask a lot of Ghanaians, the, the basic places they know are Cape Coast Castle, Boti Falls, and all of those places. A lot of Ghanaians don't even know that we have like an ostrich farm, that we have like a river on stilts, we have this, we have that. They don't know some of these things. Okay. So as, as part of my, my mindset, I think I want to solve like a lot of problems in one, like many birds in one story. So in an attempt to make travel easy and affordable for everybody, I also want to promote Ghanaian tourism. To make sure Ghanaians are traveling is only when we travel and we understand and we love these places that we can tell our friends and family abroad that, hey, 
when you come to Ghana, you can visit A, B, C, D, and the nice experience and everything. But think about it. Like if I'm in Ghana and I've not been to these places, and you come to Ghana and you say, okay, where can I go? And I'm like, oh, you can go to Cape Coast Castle or Motif. I'm like, ah. But like so many dozens of years ago, I've been I've been to these places. What's new? Like, I mean, we need to come out of that shell. So that's one of the reasons why I decided to set up Globetrot Travel, which does online hotel, flight bookings, tourism, promote domestic tourism, everything, everything related to travel. Okay, so for anybody interested in booking a ticket or travel or vacation, whatever it may be, both domestic and internationally, you're definitely looking at the CEO of Globe Travel Agency, right? Exactly, yeah. So so I will be putting that information in the description box if you are interested in reaching out to him for all your travel, vacation, and tourism um, interests. Okay, so tell me, we we know you right now or most of us know you as an MC, popularly yeah. known as the Lituation MC. Yeah. Right. And I have seen a lot of videos and posts about you and at weddings, at events. You are a professional MC for uh, even meetings in companies and things like that. So tell us how that all started. Okay. Uh, uh... Okay, this is a is a tough one. I, okay, I'll, I'll just come up with it. Okay, Go let's. Ahead. All right. So, um, first of all, I believe that every professional or everyone that's doing well in this profession might have started from being passionate about what he's doing. About something, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm one of the few people that believe that talent alone doesn't cut. You can be talented, but if you're not passionate about what you're doing, you won't succeed. Right. So combine talent, passion, and hard work, and you you will get up there. That's what I believe in. Sure. Um, public speaking has been something that I must say I've been blessed with. So speaking to a lot of people, having the confidence to express yourself to people and all of that hasn't been a difficult task for me. So in secondary school, I used to do a lot of like um, student representative council things, SRC, all of those things, speak at a lot of platforms, be part of the debaters club, all of those things. And that really groomed me into improving upon my skills when it comes to speaking in public. So um, first event, I am seeing my faculty president at the time came to me and said he wanted us to to do something new. I mean, over the years, the seniors were were the ones emceeing these events, and he felt like it was about time we we got changed. Right. So he came to me and asked if I could do it. I'm like, oh yeah, I've been I've been like a public speaker from secondary school and all. I think I can do it. So he gave me a, a platform, and then on the night of the event, trust me, that very first day, I don't think I've ever felt that in my life since then. Like. Yeah, okay. So here I was backstage with a microphone in my hand, ready to pop out there and do my thing. And these were 400 plus people, my seniors, my mates, my juniors, everybody there, lecturers, like everybody. And you needed to go get these people engaged, not only talk to them like regular speaking. Mm -hmm. You're not giving a speech, you are getting them engaged, making them have fun. You have to get your making them enjoy them right i mean how to get how do you get that very strict engineering professor who doesn't laugh with nobody to giggle at least oh or God. to smile like that was like my biggest headache so i took the microphone i went on the stage and something that i did that day that has helped me to today was before i step onto the main stage right Maybe because of my background and how I was brought up, I always, always, always say a prayer. You always, always. Pray. This is something a lot of people do not know because every day, like I, I challenge myself to remember a day that I held a mic, went onto a stage without asking God for guidance or direction. Like I don't remember. Maybe as happened, I might not know because maybe the events are a lot. But sure. like 99% of the time, I need. I need that assurance. It, I don't think it's a it's a belief or a superstition. I think it's something that 
has stuck with me and i think he has helped me over the years okay. because sometimes people and events you don't know what to do you meet an audience that is not engaging whatever you say they don't mind you they don't they don't bash they, they are just not concerned but at the end of the day we end up having a really great show and i ask myself what what did you even do like so i i kind of believe it's it's god i believe it's god so every time i do that so that very first that was the very first day i i said god i mean you know i've not done this before like help me through this i need i need help then i took the microphone and went on the stage and from the moment i stepped i stepped foot on the stage till the till the last closing prayer like it felt like everything i was doing wasn't me like it felt like somebody else was in control of me like i was doing things that i couldn't imagine like i could say something that i really thought wasn't funny but but then everybody was laughing. <laughs> laughing like i mean i enjoyed that whole experience and i took a lot of learnings from it i mean obviously i made so many mistakes so many mistakes on the very first day like with even my gestures like even like my hands the movements of my hands even the tone of my voice my breathing like so many prob- like so many challenges that later on in life like after so many other events i learned from and improved but that very first day was very challenging like after after the, after the event i went back into my room i think that was the longest i slept in school like i slept <laughs> that and trust me after that so many other faculties that i wasn't even a part of like other faculties kept calling like oh we have our event this week can you do it for us and believe you me at that time i was enjoying it because of the fact that a lot of people know you for it and you know like as a student like in school you wherever you pass you go to the canteen and ladies are saying hi to you and the boys boys everybody wants to be your friend because oh this right. is the guy that this is that the guy is, that he, right exactly so that was it for me like that was the only thing i was getting from me and i was okay like getting recognition from your friends and your peers and everything i was asking so we got on from there and then i came out of school so after school i had my very first wedding in 2012 okay and that was a friend's wedding and i didn't understand why that guy wanted to get married because all of us came out of school we are just almost finished national service no money but this guy said he was getting married and he wanted me to MC because i had MC stuff in school so i said okay so i went for the wedding and this so date is my most interesting story as an MC yeah. I, i don't think anything has happened. happened so i think that was the first day i was paid as an MC okay okay so i wasn't supposed to be paid this is my friend so i was supposed to do it for free but he came up with a conversation and said oh how much will you charge me for it then at the time 2012 i thought i was charging him like a lot so i said give me 200 cities then we agreed it was like done 200 cities then after the event which everybody danced we were happy we enjoyed because it was a lot of old school mates coming together i went to him and said oh, i was leaving with the intention that oh when i say i'm leaving you give me my money and i'll go right you pay me this guy said oh i should go and see his big sister so i thought the big sister was going to uh, give me the money so i went to see the big sister and she said oh meba i'll be right back so she went inside and i was outside dancing and having fun started making plans for my 200 cities i was going to pick a a trotro with this amount I was going to do this and that and that and that. Then this lady was coming out. There was no cash in hand. There was no envelope. She had a bucket. Don't tell me they had a whole gift box. Yeah. So you know in Ghana, engagement receptions like and all of those things have they have gifts that they give out to people. Right. So right. A plastic bucket with a napkin in it and maybe a, a mug or something those things. So, so did they the, did they have the 200 CD in there? No, nothing. No, so, so I didn't know that. Gift. Yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't know there was no money. So she came out with the stuff and she handed it to me like and that's not the best part. The best part is this. She handed it to me and I I took it knowing that oh at every engagement they give you these they give you and that. that my money my money was coming somewhere in there. Then, yeah. So I looked in it there was a bucket and napkin I think there was a match box like matches in it there was a mug and there was a pack of food 
So I thought, okay, these people are trying to treat me right and still give me money. So after that, she was like, oh, thank you so much. You did very, very well. And we are very grateful. And oh, you should come tomorrow because tomorrow is Sunday after church. We'll have like lunch at home and everybody will be okay. We'll see you. And still there was no mention of the money. So I just said, okay, let me just keep my cool. He just got married. Let me go home. And then later on, he's my friend, so we'll discuss it, right? So I went home and I spoke to him. I was like, oh, I know what's like. So he didn't anticipate that he would spend a lot on the event. The like, yeah, so in the long run, even on the day of the event, he had to pay for this, he had to pay for that. So he's a bit short on money. So I shouldn't worry. I should just keep the bucket and stuff for now and use that in remembrance of him and everything. And that when he has something small, he'll send to me. I was chill, like, I mean, he's a friend, so no big deal. But what I took from it was, at that moment in time, like, years after, what I, I thought about the whole thing was, yes, you were good, you did a very good job and everything, but you were not worth cash. Oh, hold up. We're in 2020, and this happened in 2012. Well, yeah. Has your 200 CDs made its way to you yet? Yeah. I, I don't think it's coming, Emma. So you basically work for free. For free on that very first and and to the glory of God I don't regret it. I know. Because that, that was the beginning of many amazing things to happen in my life. So that's that's one thing I took from it. Sometimes your blessings come in many, many forms. If I had insisted that I needed my money and all of that, it, I may not have gotten the blessings I have because out of that wedding. A couple of other friends and colleagues called me i did this and those people paid me for it right not as much as i would have wanted but i got financial reward for it okay. and i got experiences from it because in this line of business the more you do it the more experience you get the better you get right so my first ever gig i got a bucket i got a napkin a matchbox a mug and a pack of jollof that was my payment. i mean i guess if you put all that together is that about 200 ghana city Maybe a little less, but yeah, almost okay. almost two hundred gonna see. So let's just let's just assume you've been paid. We, we, yeah, let, yeah. So, so that's how I take it every day. Right. I take it every day, like that okay. I was paid for it. But the payments that I really got for it was the so many different people that called me to MC their events. Right. I think that was worth more than two hundred T's because I made much more than two hundred T's handling other people's events through that one event that I did. Now, moving from that, I did a one, I think about four other events that year, 2012. And then that was it. I wasn't like, nobody knew me. I wasn't on Instagram. I was nowhere. Other people were doing it, taking big money for it, but nobody knew me. So I had to pay my dues, take my time, learn the craft, master it, market myself, and get to the point where people will come looking for you. For you. Okay. So a year after that, unfortunately for me, I, I lost my family. So things became a bit rough for me. So like my mind was in a lot of places. Like people would call me and say, oh, I have a wedding coming up and I won't be interested in doing it because please forget yourself. Like, let me think about myself. I was looking at building a career rather in banking because at that time I was working in the bank. Right. So after national service, I went to work at Equipment. So I was working in the bank. So I was looking at building a banking career, not all the jumping and shouting around in <laughs> until one very day I saw somebody like somewhere and the person was really fascinated about an application on his phone and Android, like, okay. and that was in, it was Instagram and I didn't know what Instagram was and the person explained oh you put pictures and people will like it and all of that I'm like okay and it was a lady and I'm like okay women and they are drama like you people want to be appreciated so you put your picture out there for everybody to see I, I'm not really interested but I was on Facebook though at the time and Facebook had a similar thing, but it was a bit okay. different from Instagram was cool. So I didn't join Instagram. I just let it go. But I went for a wedding, a friend's wedding, and a different MC. Like I call him my senior because he's been in the industry. He's still there. Okay. Yeah. He was and then I loved what he was doing. Like, although I was doing a similar thing, but his was professional. Like when I say professional, like I mean, see, I'm I'm not even kidding. Like even the way he constructed his sentences, how he looked, right. how he, 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 he did his stuff, like everything was professional about the guy. He was the first guy I saw that had a microphone box. So you see when you have a microphone, the branded 
box and everything. He had a cue card with his name at the back. Like he was, the guy was branded and it looked very professional. He executed very professional. So after the wedding, I went to him and said, oh, I am an up and coming MC and I really would like to learn from you. Okay. And guess what? This guy said, oh, okay, oh, this is my number. Call me. And after the event, I called this guy like a thousand times. Never heard back. No, he picked the first time and I introduced oh, okay. myself. And I think after he saved my number, I was like, nah, this guy's come to disturb my life. <laughs> so he, he didn't mind me again. So moving from that, 2014, and a very good friend of mine, I don't know if I'm permitted to, was it 14 or 15? Somewhere there, 14, 15, a very good friend of mine. So we have lost contact for a very long time, but we reconnected. And when we reconnected, like, we spoke quite a lot, like almost every day. So every she was like really concerned. Like, what are you doing? What's up with you? Like, how's life treating you? Then I, I began to narrate like my story and what I do and all of that. And I I think I, by that time I was on Instagram as well. Yes. So she kind of saw like a few pictures and videos. And at that point when I wasn't really seeing the potential in myself because I had really not done anything in a long while. So I wasn't really seeing it as a big thing. She really motivated and gave me ideas, like you can do this, you can do that, you can do this, you can do that. And I picked it up from there. Everything about my branding started from the advice she gave me. She said, okay, you can do this, you can do that, you can say this. Like, even my outfit for certain events, she helped me pick some of them. Like, she would say, oh, this will look good on you, this won't look good, or oh, you can combine this style with the suit, you can do this and that. And it grew from there, basically. Like from there, it became like a business for me. I took it seriously because she's that kind of person that will not settle for for anything major. Like she won't allow you once she's involved in it. Like once she's she's taking interest in it, she won't allow you to be major. No way. So you can wear an outfit and say, "Okay, can I wear this?" She's like, "No, no, 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 you're not wearing this." <laughs> and it helped me improve. So. Other people were doing the same business, but they weren't taking too much notice of how they were dressing or how they were right. branding it. And that, in the beginning, set me apart from a lot of other people. From the rest. Like, okay. I took I took a lot of interest in looking good, like almost every time. Sometimes I I go a bit extra, like, but I sit down and I say, okay, this one is a bit too much, like, what dress you But then again you realize that it's good for the brand because people see you and they give you a certain level of respect and a, a certain level of decor. Like they, they really appreciate what you do. And the fact that you are learning each day and experiences on the job and you are branded, like branding really resonates with a lot of people. So I started with a name. I started with the hashtag, the literation MC saying that I light up people's weddings and I make people happy and I, I'm creating delible memories and all of that. And that began to ring in a lot of people's ears. Yeah, really. So they'll ask, like, I mean, who's this guy? 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 What does he do? I've heard, like, people go for weddings and actually the MCDA, he was dancing, he was doing this. So people want to know. So they'll go on the page and they'll see pictures and videos, clean pictures, clean content of the various stuff I was doing. And people began to take interest. So wedding planners began to call. Because trust me, in Ghana, if you are not at a certain level, no wedding planner will call you. So okay. rather, but at what stage do you think they started calling you? How many followers were you um, getting at that point? So I am um, at the point where I think that was around 2016 when I started getting like the big weddings, like largely weddings and everything. Uh, that time, I think I was I was almost like 5k followers on Instagram. On Instagram, okay. Yeah, and most of my followers even on Instagram weren't people that I knew personally, people that I did. And it was like, I think what helped me in the business was referrals. To okay. do a good job, and then somebody else would go say somewhere that the MC was really good. It was awesome, yeah. okay. And they'll ask, what's his name? And I think that's where I always, always would forever appreciate that friend that th that taught me how to brand because they might not necessarily remember the name of the MC, mm -hmm. but what they will say is that, oh, well, I don't remember the name, but he had a lot of stuff with, with, a w, with a W on it. Like, on his I mic, think, right. 
in on his mic with his cap he was wearing on his outfit on his this on at a point i even had it on my shoes so it was w everywhere everywhere like when you see me the only thing that if you don't remember me for nothing you remember me for the fact that i had to do something <laughs> so a lot of people will, will not remember the name but they'll say oh so mcw or something and then when they go on instagram and they type like an mc hashtag or something with the w you'll pop up because that's it so and what then, does the, the w person, mean what does that stand for so the w is my stage name waza so I'm, I'm called one mr waza for my mc one mr waza yeah but then you have the lituation mc yeah that's like a like a hashtag okay one of the few stuff i learned as well was that if you want to do mc for only weddings then you can have a really funny or weird nickname or stage name which is fine people would take it like that okay but the moment you decide to do corporate and, and mc or moderate for companies and conferences and all of that you need to have like a a certain level of professionalism so the examples my friend told me was that you know bolare right one of the finest mcs ghana ghana has ever produced ever know people, <laughs> yeah people know him as bolare like he's popular for bolare okay but his real name is kobner dc so when he's doing corporate stuff you might know him as bolare okay but companies will contact him as Cobnet DC, the corporate MC, like he's doing corporate stuff. When okay. it's time to host music, music, and other fun shows and fun fairs, you call him Bolare. So that's the inspiration that I got. But yes, my name is Bennett Otu. When it comes to doing gigs for MTN, Vodafone, and all those big, big companies, I would call myself Bennett Otu, right? But then again, they would know you as a certain way before you introduce yourself as Bennett Otu. So put a bit of professionalism to your nickname so your real identity is not lost people don't see you as a different person you're the same person but just with a bit of professionalism so i decided to add mr waza to it so you know like mr comes with a bit of you know mr that kind of thing so i didn't miss that but on instagram when i chose mr waza somebody had already taken mr waza <laughs> i had to be going up and down to change the caps from a uh, uppercase or lowercase underscore this that that eventually i said okay let me be unique so let me be the only mr what like that's that was the thinking the only mr waza that people will find on instagram then my creative mind kicked in then i said okay one mr what okay. then it it kind of sounded nice to me so i asked a few people what do you think about this thing? and they're like oh perfect it's nice so I took the name One Mr. Was, and that's been my name since that time. So they, yeah. So then you are the Lituation MC, but popularly known as One Mr. Waza. Exactly. Instagram. Exactly. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you are a professional MC, a moderator, a travel and PR consultant, a marketer, an entrepreneur, as you would like to know yourself. How no. are you making all of this happen? Um. First of all, by the grace of God. Okay. Goodness. Without without God, like not, none of this would have happened. Like none of this. Like okay. the contact, the connections, the the motivation, even to wake up every day knowing that I I really need to play my parts to impact the world. Like, so I've come to learn that a lot of people that succeed in life really do not succeed because they they step out to make money mm-hmm. money will come with what you do it's a given once you work at it and then you are consistent with it unless something very serious happens you are likely to make some good money out of it okay. but that shouldn't be the sole motivation if that's your sole motivation you might you might quit when the money doesn't come sure because every entrepreneur will tell you in the very beginning there's no money so it's easy to quit if money is a motivation but my motivation has been to wake up every morning knowing that the little i do in my small corner of this earth will impact the world one day or impacts the immediate environment somebody somewhere will benefit from what i'm doing 
That's true. That's true. So, so that's that's always been my motivation. And have you ever been at a point where you feel like there's a lot of rejection and negativity around, and has probably affected your um, output? Have- my main challenges were in the very beginning, um, where you go for an event and you are prepared your own like show and everything you get there and there are a lot of old people the older people are more than the young people now even your utterances have to be different because you might say something that will not go down well with the old people and if you try to pay attention to the old people and make them feel good the young people begin to feel happy which young boy is behaving like he's old like that and all of that that's true yeah and then another another thing is this uh, i learned a long time ago that as an mc you stick to your job. There's a big difference between an MC and a comedian. And as an MC, you try to do too much and you try to behave like a comedian, then you might end up in trouble. MCs have a job to make sure the event flows, right? A comedian is there to make people laugh. That's his job. Okay. So a comedian can be forgiving for hosting an event where the event is in a mess but people laugh he can be forgiven mm-hmm. because that's not his job his job was to make people laugh and he made them but an, an mc who makes people laugh will not be forgiving if the event is all over the place yeah people laugh i mean people laugh and so what it was your job to make sure everything was flowing was plan, right exactly so you will not be forgiving for having a very bad event although people laughed at your jokes now in my experience i once told a joke that was ethnic sensitive you know how Ghanaians like to joke about ls and gas and all of that yeah it was an ethnic joke so in ghana like we have jokes where would 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 throw the ls or we throw the gas or we throw the ashantis or something and this group of people were ashanti so i really thought like if i if i throw ls they'll be happy about it or like i mean they'll make it like fun about it I said a joke and a couple of people laughed, but a couple of hours were in there that immediately opposed to whatever I said, like violent, like they were very aggressive about it, like they weren't happy. Right at the event. Right there. Wow. What did they do? Like they were talking back, like sort of like so they were sitting in the audience and talking back. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and it was very embarrassing for me. So I had to apologize for it. Right there, okay. Right there. I have to apologize for it and raise up my hands and say, no malice intended. It was meant to be a harmless joke. I'm sorry if I stepped on any toes, everything. And then DJ played some music. I had to go reboot, come. So a few of the elders came to me and said, no, what you did wasn't right. I mean, never pick on any tribe, especially because right. it's, ethnic, it's sensitive. So I learned my lesson. From that day till now, I have never in my life tried that. <laughs> <laughs> irrespective of whether it's ethnic related or it's race related or it's gender related or i i will not say a joke my job is to empty an event and make people enjoy themselves sure. maybe i pass a comment here and there that makes people laugh fine but not to actively stand there and say okay there was a man and a woman who were going here and that no I've never done that since that day, and it's been like about seven years or eight years. I've, I, I wouldn't. Do you have any advice for the younger ones out there who are probably trying to be an MC or an entrepreneur, like you would say? Um, any advice you want to give them out there? Um, to anybody that wants to become an MC, to do anything in life, basically. I mean, I, I call these things life experiences because right. although they. They are full-time jobs for some of us right now, but they are life experience. They are things we do in life. So any step that you want to take, believe in it, first of all. Once you believe in it and you believe that you can do it, don't let nothing limit you. There will be challenges. There will be roadblocks here and there. There will be people that will tell you that you cannot do it. And there will be people that will make you feel like you're not good enough or you're not worth it, right? And there I say that there are people that made me feel that way. Even when I got the bucket and the napkin, I felt like, I mean, I, mean, went, bucket and <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, that was like my first, first gig, like my first, first gig. So if you ask me for memories, like these are things that will never go away. If you ask me like, how did it all start? Like 
when was your first wedding? That was my first wedding, and that was my payment. So it never goes away. So yeah, people would make you feel like that. Sometimes you feel really underappreciated because sure. people would will make it seem like what you did wasn't even much, and everybody can do it. But have your own niche, carve for yourself your own niche, brand yourself, hype yourself. Nobody is going to hype you as much as your own self. Sure. It's only when you hype yourself that people will also see that mm, this guy. Let me go and check why why he's be, he's making so much noise. Okay. And because you believe in yourself and you believe in your craft, you are sure that when people go to your page or they see you do something, they would know that you are worth the hype that you're hyping yourself. That's best. Now, another thing too is this: don't go into an endeavor because everybody else is getting get so into it. it. At the moment in Ghana, there's this big craze about face shields and everybody selling face shields and all of that. Like, I mean, I, I call that lazy thinking that we sit down for somebody to to get into a business and then because we think it's very lucrative, everybody else jumps into it. So, right. Sit down and analyze yourself. I realized that I, I was good at public speaking. And by the grace of God and with his wisdom and everything, I was able to build it into a career. Okay. I realized that agriculture is something I learned and passionate about. And by the grace of God, I was able to build it into um, a business. Okay. I realized that along the line, I picked up the, the design, the passion for travel. So travel is something that I could do as a business and I'm doing it as a business. So I think that anybody that's up and coming, going, if you're out of school, don't just rely on the fact that you've done national service and you want to work in a bank and wear a tie and a suit because some of us have worn the tie and the suit for like the longest. We've been there, like suit and tie every day okay. for like the longest. And I won't say that it doesn't help. For those who succeed in it, those who have a passion for banking and all those other corporate jobs, they excel in it and it helps them. We are all different. Five fingers, not the same. Somebody's blessing will come during national service. Another person will come 10 years after national service and all of that. So believe in yourself. Believe in your craft. Wait, if you're a Christian, believe in God. Wait upon God. Pray a lot. Use God in everything that you do. Sure. He might not answer immediately as I believe, but he will not disappoint. Eventually, right. He would do it. If we are Muslim, believe in Allah, believe in the Quran, whatever you believe in, believe in it, pray as much as you can. And in the long run, eventually, it happens for everybody. That's why I believe it. Was that one, Mr. Waza? Thank you so much, Bennett, for coming in today. <laughs> really appreciate it. I, um, for all of you who might want to check him out, he's on Instagram as one Mr. Waza. He is popularly known as the Let's Function MC, doing an amazing job out there. You want to check his travel agency as well. That will be at www.blogtrottravel.com. And I will put all his contact information as well down in the description box. Thank you so much, Bennett, for coming in today. Really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you for having me. Thank you. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you subscribe, like, comment, and share as well. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Look, I was just playing with it. And then eventually, it worked because out. I was the only Ghanaian, I was the only person from Ghana.